Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're coming to you today from the shores of the mighty River Nile to bring you episode number six in our incredible new tutorial series where you're learning how to make Python and Arduino work together. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment, which I gave you in lesson number five. And that was to take that first simple little voltmeter that we had developed that was updating live in real time from the voltage that we're measuring from the Arduino and take that and put in the minor tick marks and put in the labels on the tick marks and so forth and sort of move out and start doing a little bit on your own associated with uh, with Visual Python. Now, what I need to know, how many of you guys were able to do the homework? If you were able to do the homework, leave a comment down below. I am legend. Or if you were not able to do it, leave a comment down below. I fold it up like a cheap Walmart launcher, which is actually okay because a lot of times we learn by trying real hard and not being able to do it. And now you can come in and see how I do it and you'll just learn it a lot better if you actually tried and struggled before you saw my solution. If you just watch me do it, it looks easy and you think it's easy. If you sit and pound away on it for several hours and aren't able to do it, then when you watch me do it, it's like a light bulb going off. Okay. Now also, if you did it, what I want you to do is I want you to post your sol uh, solution over on YouTube in the comments down below link over to your homework solution and then in the description of the video you post link back to this lesson so anybody that watches it will have context in what you are doing. Okay enough of this introductory chit chat let's move over and let's see if we can get busy we will come over to our code view here <coughs> And just as a quick reminder, what we have going on here is we have the Arduino. The Arduino is hooked to a potentiometer. Center tap of the potentiometer is coming to Arduino pin A0. The left tap is coming to Arduino 5 volts and the right tap is coming to Arduino ground and we are measuring the voltage off of that uh, center tap. So it is a simple voltage divider that will go from 0 to 5 volts. We need to make sure that we are operating with the same Arduino code and so we can run really quickly over to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com and let's see if I can find uh, here it is okay www www.toptechboy.com needs to come to this happy little search bar and search on something like Arduino using Arduino with Python lesson five. Okay. And so this was lesson five. You come down here and you click on these two little pages like that. And that copies this Arduino code to the clipboard. And then we're going to come over and we are going to open up our Arduino IDE. We are going to paste that code in there. And now we are just for good measure going to go ahead and download it into the Arduino and everything looks happy. We can copy and paste. Uh-huh. Now let's look at the serial monitor, make sure that we're getting data. Okay. Yes, we are getting good data and everything seems to be working properly. Why do I like to do this? Because if we get into, you know, really get into the Python side and having strange errors, then we find out, oh, we didn't have our COM port set up that, you know, for some reason our COM port had changed. I always like to just verify before spending a lot of time coding that things are in fact operating as we expect. And of course, this has to be perfectly square there. That's almost perfect. Okay. So now we are going to do the Python side and to do the Python side, you come down to the second code uh, snippet, you grab that, and this will take you back to where we left off in lesson number five. And so what we can do here is we can open up our Explorer view. Remember, we are working in PyArduino. 
folder, we are going to come here and we are going to say add a new program. We're going to call this passdata-4.py and the .py is kind of important and boom, fresh new Python program just waiting for you to write it. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to come here and I want to paste that code that I got and now we have it and let's see, let's go ahead now and run this just to make sure that the universe is in proper order and we have a little bit of a voltmeter there. Okay, look at that. So that's where we left off last, last week. Okay, we've got our tick marks to go from zero to five volts and it is responding live to the voltage on the potentiometer. Pretty slick, right? This is pretty slick, but what do we want to do? We want to dress this up a little bit. We want to dress this up a little bit. Hey, I wanted to ask answer a question that somebody had that was a really, really good question. And, uh, you know, let me, let me answer it because I had never really ex explained it. Like, what's the difference between import time import serial or like import uh, import uh, numpy as np or import from vpython import star. Okay, I kind of am importing libraries three different ways. And so let's just go with this one. If I say import time, anytime I want to use one of the methods or functions in time, what I have to put is I have to put time, the library name, dot the function or method like that. Okay. And so if I just say import time, everything's got to be time dot this time dot that or import serial. Then what I have to do is where did I do that? That should be here somewhere. Okay. That is then serial, the library name dot dot serial. Ah, I messed that up. Serial, the library name dot serial, the method. Okay, so if you import a library, then anytime you use that library, you have to call out the library. Now, if I import numpy as np, now anytime I want to use the library, I don't have to type in numpy, I just have to type in np. And so that's like when we get down here and we have np.cosine and np.sine, that's a lot easier than having to type numpy. All right, now what about this from vpython import star nonsense. Well, what that means is, is that I'm importing everything out of vPython and I don't want to, every time I use the library, have to say vPython this or vPython that. And in fact, if I imported it, uh, you know, even uh, import vPython as VP, then my arrow would have to be VP arrow. And maybe even, you know, some of these things in here like color.red, it might have to be vp.color.red. And when you're doing a vPython program and almost everything is vPython, you don't don't want to just have to keep putting VP, 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 or VPython, VPython, VPython. So why don't we import everything this way? The reason we don't import everything this way is what if VPython and NumPy had a method with the same name? Then you would just have catastrophe. You wouldn't know which one to use or you wouldn't be sure which one it would be used or you were thinking you're doing a NumPy function where you're really doing a VPython function. So really this is kind of dangerous to do but for VPython and that's the only one we're doing I think that is the best way to do it. Okay, that was a great question. I hope that answered it. But I have digressed in a most majorly fashion. All right, what do we want to do first? I think the first thing that I want to do is, I think the first thing that I want to do is I want to put in those minor tick marks. Okay, so we're going to come down here and this, uh, let's see, where did we put in the major tick marks? Okay, here they are. So I go in theta, I go from uh, five pi over six, okay, that's, you know, the zero to pi over six and I make six steps. Now, why do I make six steps? Because I go zero, one, two, three, four, five, zero to five is six. Now to do the minor tick marks, you could imagine it is almost exactly the same as that. So let's just copy that. Okay. And then let's paste it. And now we got to kind of think, well, I'll give you a little hint. The minor tick marks 
are smaller than the major tick marks. And so you can just go in and do the minors all the way from the five pi over six, all the way to the pi over six, and then they will just be hidden behind the major tick marks when they intersect. And that way you don't have to go from here to here, stop, move, stop, jump. It's just go all the way. And so with that, first of all, I should say now we're doing what? Tick minor. We're going to do the minor tick marks. And now let's go in and see what we want to do. Well, first of all, what range do we want to go through? Well, we still want to start at zero and we want to go to five. Okay, we want to start at the pi over six and we want or start at five pi over six and go all the way to pi over six, which is going from zero volts to five volts. Now the first tick mark at zero volts is going to be hiding behind the major tick mark and the last tick mark at five is going to be hiding behind the major tick mark, but then we should have nine tick marks between the two. And then the 10th one will be hidden behind the major one, if that makes sense. So we still want to go over this same range. Okay. But now what is it that is actually going to change? It is over here. How many tick marks do you want? Okay, the question is, how many tick marks do you want? And I want you to think about that for just a second. So, you know, like you said, well, I had six on the, I had six on the uh, uh, major tick marks. Maybe I want 10 times as many, I want 60. But you really don't want 60 because between zero and one, you want 10, between one and two, you want 10, between three and four, you want 10, between four and five, you want 10. So that would be nominally, that would be how many? 50. Okay, that would be 50. Now we don't just multiply by 10 and go to 60. No, that would be 50, but we have to remember the first minor tick mark is where? It's at zero. So the total number of tick marks would be what? 51. I hope that makes sense because that is probably one of the trickiest things that we're going to do. Okay, now what I think I want to do is I want to make that minor tick mark some like fraction, like tick fraction. And let's say we could make it like 0.5 of what the big tick mark is. And then we can just see what that's going to look like. Well, when we come down here now, arrow length is going to be what? It's going to be tick fraction times that. So it's going to, it's going to make everything scale down by tick fraction. Why do I do this? So I don't have to come in and change this over and over. So I have tick fraction times the NP cosine, that is the X value. And then I am going to take, uh, mm, let's see. No, that is the position. The position, I'm going to, I'm going to try leaving the position the same. So I'm not going to change the position. It's the size that I want to change the size of the tick mark. So let's come over here and see where we have size. Okay, here it is. Okay, yeah, it's this that I want to change the size. So this is going to be tick fraction times. And then tick fraction times. And then on the tick height, it's going to be tick fraction times. Okay. And then how they're pointing should all be the same. So let's see what happens here. Boom, look at that. Does that not really look better? Now you can also see the position of the tick marks that the position is relative to the center of it. So you can see when you made it shorter, it still puts the center in the same place. So the center of the minor tick mark is in the same place as the center of the major tick mark. But I actually think that looks kind of good. I actually think that looks kind of good. We could move the position down a little bit if we wanted the bottoms to align, but I actually think this looks pretty good. Now the real question is, did we get the right number of tick marks? Let's see. So this would be zero, one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. So you see, those really are a tenth of a volt. And so I think that looks really good. Now, what do we want to do? We want to go in and put the numbers on. So this would be like zero, one, two, three, four, five. And so how would we do that? Well, we would do that with our old friend, the label. Okay. We would do that with the old friend, uh, the, you know, our label command. And so what I'm thinking is where would be the best place to put that? Uh, let's see. I think I'll do it after I put the tick marks on. Okay. So down here, we built the box. I think I'll do it right after the tick mark. So it's about the same thing. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to want to put them in in a for loop again. And so what we are going to probably take advantage of is this same, uh, this same one here, because you could imagine that what we are going to want is we're going to want to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so that's going to be six numbers. So we're just going to take that for loop, the, the definition of it, and that's going to be, okay, we're going to start at 5 pi over 6, and we're going to go to pi over 6, and we're going to put the numbers on. Okay, now what I'm going to have to do in here is I am <coughs> going to have to put a label. So I'm going to call it label. And that is going to be equal to, what do I want to put? I want to put text, okay? And then what text do I want to put? Well, text is equal to, hmm, I need a number. Ah, how am I going to get a number? Well, I need to set up a counter here. So I'm going to put CNT is equal to zero because I want to start at zero. And then each time through the loop, I'm going to say CNT is equal to CNT plus one, like that. Let me move this on up. Okay. CNT is equal to CNT plus one. And then what text do I want to put there? Well, I want to put CNT. The problem is CNT is a number and vPython wants a string. So I'm going to take the stream value of what CNT. Now that should, that should get the number that I want. Now what I got to think about is I got to think about where I'm going to put it. So I've got to think of the position. So I got to think about, about the position and that's going to be equal to a vector. And again, what you can kind of think is we want it right there, like sort of where the tick mark is. So just like I put that position on the tick mark by doing the, uh, you know, the X value is the length times the cosine and the Y value is the length times the sine. Well, I want that same position for my letters and then we'll tweak it. But remember that is something that we did up here, like on the tick marks, like on the major tick marks. So let's get position. Let's get position from this tick mark. And that position here, that vector was the arrow length times the cosine of the angle and the arrow length times the sine of the angle and then zero and Z. Let's get that and use that as a starting point to see if we can get this to work. All right. Now we're going to have to do a lot of tweaking, but let's just see what that looks like now. I like to look at it as I'm going and then kind of fine tune it. Oh, this thing moved crooked. I can't stand that. Okay, let's see, try it again. Oh, we have a few issues here. We have a few issues here. Uh, first of all, it is huge. The first problem is it is huge. Doing a little Windows management here. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to deal with the size probably. Okay, we need to deal with the size. And so the way I'm going to deal with that is I'm going to come in here and remember we are on the, we are on the text statement here. The first thing that I'm going to do there, and I'm on that text line, I'm going to say color equal color dot black like that. Don't you think? Okay, let's give it a color. And let's see here. So we got to give it a color. And I think color would be, I think black would be good. And then we're going to, the way we change it, we're going to give it a height to make it smaller. 
and this height we're going to say well if the whole box is like if the if the arrow is one okay if the if the needle is one let's make the height point one just to see if we can get it in the ballpark now let's run this and see what it looks like kill that were you guys able to do this just a little progress okay okay now what is it that I don't like there's a couple of things I don't like one is one thing that you can see is yeah it put it right over the tick marks but I want it a little bit past well what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of set up a parameter there and then I'm going to put that parameter in and this would be in our position statement and so let's come over here and again we are on we are on this this uh, label but what I'm going to put is I'm going to put in a lab uh, a lab f for label factor like how far do I want the label moved out what factor and I want to put it on position and so I'm going to say label factor is equal to 1.2 why do I put it here instead of just putting it all in the command that way if I want to change it I don't have to deal with that long command I can just change it in this one spot so let's say label factor times so that's going to boost arrow length a little bit and then lab uh, label factor times there and that's going to boost it there as well and then of course z is zero so i think those are the two places it would move it out further if we did that so let's run this and see if it moves it out further okay yeah it did a little bit too far a little bit too far in my mind and so what i think i am going to do there is i am going to uh, i'm going to come here and i'm going to make the lab label factor the lab f i'm going to try it at 1.1 and we'll see how that looks see if that looks any better yeah i kind of like that okay now what is one thing that we don't like if you look everything is kind of offset a little bit okay do you see how like the three everything is offset and that's because it's aligning thing to like the lower left corner of the text that where you say the position is it puts the lower left corner at that position and what we really want is we want the center at that position and so what we need to do is we need to come in to our label command here again that is getting very ugly long and what we need to put there is we're going to say align equal center and that way it'll align it to the center of the text and then it should be spot on as far as lining up how we want it to line up so let's come back here and let's go here whoa we sure messed something up there what did I do what did I do oh 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 okay I know what I did I have an error so let's come back to our label command and when I said center I forgot that center is a string so I have to put the quote around it that should do it so let's run that okay now that is a line better now some of you guys might be happy with it just the way it is but I kind of want I don't want those labels to be vertical I want them to be aligned along the axis of the tilt of, of the along aligned along the axis of the tick mark so the zero I don't want like this the zero I want tilted to line up with that tick mark well what parameter would that be what parameter would that be that would be the axis okay so what I'm going to put here is I am going to put a axis 
is equal to vector. And what vector is going to be? I want it to point. I want it to align exactly the same way as the tick mark, which is, remember, it's that length times the cosine of theta comma length times the sine of theta, which we showed you how to do last week. So are you starting to see how important that is? So if we come up to like our tick major, what we want is we want exactly the same axis. Okay. And so again, this is the arrow length times np cosine comma arrow length np sine, and then the zero for good measure for the z. And that uh, is very hard to do here. So, okay, so I'm going to get out to here. And then, uh, you know what? It's just hard because if I go up or down, it messes it up. So, I've got to copy carefully. Okay, there it is. Control C, and then I'll put it down here again back to my label, my lab. We'll put it there. Okay, and now that I think should tilt, should tilt those numbers. Now it might do something unexpected, but let's just see what happens if we just do it. You know, it might align them along an axis that we weren't expecting, but then we can deal with that. Yes, indeed it did. Yes, indeed it did. And so what do we want to do there? Well, what we want to do is uh, we can see that we are off by what? We are off by 90 degrees. Okay, we are off by 90 degrees. And so what I think that I need to do is I think that I want to, I want to rotate them in the negative 90 degrees. I want to rotate them negative 90 degrees, which would be uh, minus pi over 2. And so if I think I, if I come in and take the angle and minus pi over 2, I think it will align them right. And so let's try that. We will come back over here. And then remember, this is our axis. Let me come over here. You're on your label gargantuanly long obnoxious line and then we go to the axis and what we're going to do is that angle we want to subtract np dot pi divided by 2 and then the same thing on the sign on that angle we want to subtract np dot pi over 2, like that. Okay, I think this is going to just pop them right, rotate them 90 degrees, rotate them pi over 2. I think this is going to work. Yeah, look at that. Boom! Is this not one of the most lovely <laughs> analog meters that you've ever seen? I love this. And what you can see is my potentiometer is kind of wanting to jump out of the socket, and so I'm having to press down on it as I turn. But look at that. That is absolutely lovely. I am thinking now a couple of things I want to do to dress this up is I want to put like a little hub here. Like I would just wonder if I can put a little hub there, like maybe a little, uh, maybe just like a little sphere or something to give it like there's a little hub there. Uh, or maybe maybe I would put a little cylinder. Let's see if I could put a little cylinder there. But I think we need something there. And so we're going to come up here where we were creating. Let's do it when we were creating the arrow. And then uh, I'll have like a hub length is equal to how tall do I want it to be? It's going to be pretty small. Let's make it 0.2. And then hub radius, let's make it equal to 0.1 like that. And now let's say my hub and my hub is going to be equal to my hub is going to be equal to a what cylinder and the cylinder is going to have a color equal color dot red. And then it is going to have a uh, it is going to have a radius 
is equal to hub radius, it is going to have a length is equal to hub length. And then probably what we're going to do is we're probably going to have to come in and rotate it in the right orientation. But let's just see if we get something if we do this. I always forget to kill the program. Okay, so there it is. And what you can see is we need to make it smaller by quite a bit, and then we need to rotate it. It's pointing in the positive x direction. Where do we want it to point? In the positive z direction. Now we're not going to have to do, go in and do sines and cosines or anything on this because it's just we know that that one would be 0 in x, 0 in y, and 1 in z, and I think that should fix it. So let's try that and let's put an axis statement in here. And again we're on that cylinder and so we're going to say axis. Axis is equal to vector and then what do we want? We want 0 in the x, 0 in the y, and 1 in the z. And I think that should make it. And then let's make this quite a bit smaller. Let's make it like point, uh, let's make it point O2. And let's make it point O1. Now that's probably too small. The length probably should be like point O5. We can look at it and then we can decide what to do. Now it's like you can't hardly see it. Okay, it's there. It's a little too long. It's about twice too long. And what we need to do, it's about twice too long. About twice too long, and then we need to make it bigger. Maybe twice as big and half as long is what I would think. So twice as big, half as long would be 0.02. And 0.02. Yeah, that's interesting. We ended up at 0.02. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I think that's perfect. You see how it just makes it look like a little bit of a pivot point there? I think that is really slick. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to like put a label on it, and then that's kind of where I'll stop as far as this uh, as far as this lesson goes. But what I want to do is I want to come over here and then I want to put in a label overall. And if I'm going to put in a label overall, I'm going to have to make the box. I'm going to have to make that background white box. I'm going to have to make it taller. Okay, I'm going to have to make it taller. And where did we do that silly thing? That was box. Okay, so box Y here where I said it was 1.5. I need to make it 2 so I can leave re room for the label. And then I need to come down here. The last thing before we set up our serial monitor. And uh, in fact, it's right after my case, so that's that's kind of good. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make a my label. And that, instead of being label LAB, the problem with LAB is it just gives you text. When you use label or when you use text, when you use the vPython command tech, text, it creates more of a 3D object of the text. And that's really cool. The reason you don't always do it is you can't live update that. So if you're going to live update the text, you need to use the label command. If you're not going to live update the text, then the text command is better, if that makes sense. So instead of label here, I'm going to say text. And then what do I want my text to be? Well, I want text to be equal to, and I'm going to call this thing the Volt-O-Matic, like that. This is going to be the Volt-O-Matic. And then in the Volt-O-Matic, I'm going to need a position, and that's going to be equal to a vector. And what I want is I want it centered x and y, so it's or centered in x, so it's going to be 0. And then y, I want to move it up. Okay, and I'm going to move it up by about 1.5, so it'll be above the dial. And then it's going to be 0 and z, okay, like that. And then what I need to do is I need to give it a color. I'm going to say color is equal to color dot red, okay. And then I'm also going to need to give it a height. And let's say height is equal to 0.25, like that, okay. Now let's see what happens. Okay. 
bolt on matting. Hey, that looks pretty good. What do we not like? It's lining it with the lower left again. I want to line it to the center. So what would you think that I needed to do there? Somebody tell me what you think I need to do with my label command there. I need to come out here and I need to put a what? A line equal in quotes center like that. Okay, I think this is going to be super cool. Boltomatic, look at that. All right. That is really slick. The let's see. The one thing I don't like that is too far up. That is too far up. And so how far did I go on that position on that thing on my label? The position I went, went up 1.5. Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm going to go like 1.25 and we're going to see how that looks. Kill it. Okay, and now you can see the over, overall Voltomatic is a little bit too tall. And so, I mean, the, uh, the box itself. And so that box, instead of 2.5, instead of 2 on the height, I'm going to put 1.75 and see how that looks. And then I'm going to make the Voltomatic a skosh bit smaller and make the Voltomatic 0.2. And now we're going to quit fooling around with this and trying to get it absolutely perfect. Okay, that looks really good. I think that is just really slick. Okay, guys, I hope you are having as much fun taking this class. I hope you guys are having as much fun taking this class as I am making these lessons. And I think making that voltmeter was just really, really, really super fun. Okay, this is your homework for next week. Okay, this is your homework for next week. I want you guys to go in and really just go overboard with annotating this and making it fancy. Maybe you would actually make it look more like a box. You could even imagine having a white background, you know, like we do. You could add imagine even having like a p opaque like piece of glass over it you could turn it to the side you could really 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 kind of go completely overboard with this and that's what i want you guys to do i want you to see just who can come up with the best voltomatic now i have trademarked the world word volt voltomatic so you're going to have to call yours something else but really 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 make an over the top voltmeter based on what i've taught you so far now once you make your voltmeter what you're assignment is is to do a screen capture post it to YouTube and then in the comments down below put a link over to your homework solution then on your homework solutions make sure that you leave a link back to this lesson so they know what you're talking about also some of you guys have the comments turned off or you have it like posted for kids or different strange things make sure you post it where people can see it and make sure that you post it where people can leave comments on it because I really love it like on our earlier artificial intelligence and vPython class you guys were posting your work and you guys were looking at each other's work and seeing who could do what and how they did it and if a bunch of people are doing different things you're, we're going to learn a lot more from that than you guys just watching me and see what I do and so I think that would be really neat now next week in the in the lesson itself we're going to move on to the next topic we're going to be doing the kind of next level of things of connecting python and arduino together but i am just really having fun hopefully you guys will enjoy it if you enjoyed this lesson make sure to give us a thumbs up helps us if you leave a comment down below that helps us with the old youtube juice when we get a lot of uh, a lot of comments if you have not already subscribed to the channel and when you subscribe to the channel make sure you ring that bell so that uh, you get notifications when the future lessons are coming out and then share this with other people because the world needs more engineers and coders and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos Paul McWhorter, coming from the banks of the mighty River Nile. I will talk to you guys later.